All right, so we are gonna go over some of the lysosomal storage disorders. In particular here, we're gonna go over the biggest class, uh, which are the sphingolipidoses. Now, sphingolipids do a lot of things. They're involved in intracellular signaling. Um, it does not, it's not important that you understand what they do because it really has nothing to do with these diseases. Uh, these diseases are a really big pain in the you-know-what for medical students because they're really rare. You don't run into these hardly ever, if at all, uh, and they really are very different. Um, even though they all work on the same pathway, they have very different presentations, and uh, so it's... Unfortunately, it involves a lot of memorization. You need to memorize this pathway and you need to memorize the enzymes and then you need to memorize the diseases that go with these enzymes. So as you can probably imagine, it's really useful to have a mnemonic. And I do have a mnemonic for you, but some of this stuff you're just gonna have to put in your Anki deck and just memorize it. Um, so I'm going to kind of help you along the way, and hopefully this video will be a good uh, accompaniment to your deck. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll go over some of the manifestations of these diseases, and hopefully it'll help this make a little more sense. But I hate to be the bearer of bad news. You're really just going to have to memorize a lot of this stuff. It is very heavily tested on the USMLE. I should say it's fair game on the USMLE. Fortunately, though, uh, what they expect you to know is the enzyme that's involved in the disease, uh, the product that's going to build up because of the enzyme deficiency or defect, and then something about the disease. So as they're not going to give you really complicated questions. They're probably going to give you a buzzword, and I will point out some buzzwords for each of these diseases, and there are six of them. So you've got your work cut out for you. All right, so let's go ahead and start out in earnest here. Uh, now, all of these sphingolipids are going to converge on ceramide. And ceramide then will get broken down further, but everything's going to converge on ceramide. So let's go through our first path here. And the first where we start out is called GM2 ganglioside. So I'm just going to write GM2 here. As long as you know GM2, you're fine. And GM2 is broken down into GM3. Why do they call it GM3 when it's broken down from GM2? I don't know. But it's GM2 gets broken down to GM3 ganglioside. And then that gets broken down into glucocerebroside. Glucocerebroside. All right, now the enzyme that takes you from GM2 to GM3 is called hexose aminidase. So there's our first enzyme that you need to know, and we'll come back to what diseases are what. All right, now there's another way that we get to glucocerebroside, and it's from ceramide trihexoside. So it's not ceramide, it's ceramide trihexoside. And the enzyme that does this is called alpha-galactosidase A. I'm just gonna write A-gal A. Alpha-galactosidase A. Okay, so that pretty much converges on glucocerebroside, and now we need to get to ceramide. And the way we get from glucocerebroside to ceramide is by an enzyme called glucocerebrosidase. And that makes sense, right? Anytime you have an enzyme where something's being broken down, it's whatever is being broken down, ACE usually, like tyrosinase or arginase. So glucocerebrosidase. Now, how else do we get to ceramide? Well, we can get there directly when we break down sphingomyelin. So sphingomyelin breaks down into ceramide through the enzyme sphingomyelinase. So again, we've got an... Sorry, I misspelled that. Sphingomyelinase. So again, we have an enzyme that makes sense as far as what it's breaking down, sphingomyelinase. Another way we get to ceramide is through the breakdown of sulfatides. So I'm gonna put our sulfatides up here. Okay. And sulfatides get broken down into galactocerebroside. 
Such long words, huh? Okay, so galactocerebroside. And then galactocerebroside gets broken down to ceramide by, you guessed it, galactocerebrosidase. Now there's one more enzyme, the one that breaks down sulfatides to galactocerebroside, and that's called aryl sulfatase A. Aryl sulfatase A. Okay, so that's your pathway. You're really going to have to just remember a lot of this stuff. Fortunately, the enzymes kind of make sense based on um, the names of the, the products. So as long as you know the products, you should be able to figure out where the enzymes are. Okay, so we have six diseases. Okay, and these diseases, we're just going to run through them. And then I will give you a buzzword for each of these diseases, and then we'll go through the diseases one by one. Okay, so hexosaminidase. That is, if it's deficient, gives you Tay-Sachs disease. Now, Tay-Sachs disease is probably the most well-known of the lysosomal storage disorders, even though it's not the most common one. Uh, but Tay-Sachs, think of cherry red macula. Now we're going to see there's another one that gives you a cherry red macula, but here you get cherry red macula. Another thing to think of is neurologic degeneration. Okay, that's definitely not specific though. Okay, so that's Tay-Sachs. The next one is Neiman-Pick disease. Oh, sorry. Neiman Pick. Now, Neiman Pick, what I want you to remember is cherry red macula and hepatosplenomegaly. Okay, so know those two things. Neiman Pick is basically Tay Sachs plus hepatospl hepatosplenomegaly. Okay, the next one is over here at aryl sulfatase, and this is called metachromatic leukodystrophy. Metachromatic leukodystrophy. What I want you to remember here is MS symptoms in a child. All of these diseases affect children. Okay, the next one I want you to remember is Fabry disease. Fabry disease is right here at alpha-galactosidase A. And what I want you to remember with Fabry disease is two things. One, X-linked recessive. It's the only one. And then also, I want you to think of renal. Okay? Next, we have Gaucher disease. And this is glucocerebrosidase. Okay? <laughs> I know this is a lot. I promise it'll make more sense by the end. Okay, so this is Gaucher disease. What I want you to remember with Gaucher disease is bone. So Gaucher is bone. And then finally, one more, galactocerebrosidase. This is called Krabby disease. And what I want you to remember with Krabby disease is something called globoid cells. Okay, so we'll run through all of these, I promise. That'll be what we do next. But what I want you to first do is remember this mnemonic. If you remember this mnemonic, you will be able to connect the diseases with the enzymes. And if you remember the enzymes, you will probably be able to remember the products because the enzyme names kind of relate to the products. Okay. So the mnemonic is Tom has nine shirts, most are saffron, few are green. So Tom has is T for Tay-Sachs, H for hexosaminidase. Some people remember the X in hexosaminidase is sounding like the X in Tay-Sachs. So there you go. Tay-Sachs, hexos hexosaminidase, Tom has. Next, nine shirts. N for Neiman Pick, S for sphingomyelinase. Some people remember no man picks his nose with his finger, S-P-H-I-N-G-E-R. Uh, you can take that or leave, leave it. 
So N and S, nine shirts. Next, most are saffron. That's M for MCD, metachromatic leukodystrophy. R saffron, AS for aerosulfatase. So there you go, there's that one. And then few are green, F for Fabry, AG for alpha galactosidase. And that's alpha galactosidase A. So there's Fabry. So we knocked out Tay-Sachs, we knocked out Neiman Pick, we knocked out Metachromatic, and we knocked out Fabry. The other two you're just gonna have to remember. Uh, so Krabby is Galactocerebrosidase, and I'm gonna introduce you to the Galactic Crab at the end of this talk. And then Gaucher is Glucocerebrosidase. So those two you're just gonna have to remember. Uh, but remember this mnemonic because it will get you a point on the USMLE, I promise. All right, so let's look a little bit more in depth into Tay-Sachs and Neiman Pick. So Tay-Sachs and Neiman Pick look a lot like each other. They're always going to be a child, usually under the age of three. Uh, they're going to have progressive neurodegeneration. So they hit their milestones and then they kind of regress. They're both going to have a cherry red macula. Now, I know a lot of students look at cherry red macula and they think, oh, it's Tay-Sachs. And that is not true. There are a lot of things I can give you a cherry red macula. On the USMLE, it's either going to be Tay-Sachs or it's going to be Neiman Pick. What is going to help you remember the difference is that Neiman Pick gives you hepatosplenomegaly. Tay-Sachs does not. So Tay-Sachs is just going to be what both of these have in common. So the neurodegeneration, the cherry red macula, and then sort of this uh, spasticity that both of these will get. So that's Tay-Sachs. Now the pathologic finding with Tay-Sachs, and you will need to know this, is lysosomes that when you look at them under electron microscopy, they look like onion skins. So that's this right here. Okay, these are onion skin lysosomes, and this is characteristic of Tay-Sachs. Now, Neiman Pick, on the other hand, has not onion skin lysosomes, but zebra bodies. So look, see how these stripes here kind of look like zebras? Uh, so that is Neiman Pick, zebra bodies. Another thing that they could tell you is under light microscopy, you get foam cells. And that's just a collection of these sphingomyelins in lysosomes. So one of the mnemonics that people like to use with Neiman Pick is no man has a zebra and picks his nose with his finger. So no man for Neiman has, the HS stands for hepatosplenomegaly, a zebra, zebra bodies, and picks his nose with his finger for sphingomyelinase. So there's Tay-Sachs and Neiman Pick. Next, we have metachromatic leukodystrophy. We remember this mnemonic because most are saffron of Tom's nine shirts. And so the AS is aryl sulfatase A. And because it's got sulfa in it, it's the breakdown of sulfatides. Now, metachromatic leukodystrophy looks a lot like multiple sclerosis, but it happens in a child. And multiple sclerosis does not happen in a child. So if you see symptoms like maybe some, uh, not only loss of milestones, but uh, like uh, maybe some peripheral neuropathy and sort of this progressive paralysis in different parts of the body, um, cognitive deterioration, really MS-like symptoms. And then you look at the child through CT or MRI, and you see white matter lesions. It just looks like multiple sclerosis. If you see it in a child, it's metachromatic leukodystrophy, not MS. So here you can see these white matter lesions all over, and they're even around the ventricles, which is really weird. Uh, so they look kind of like the Dawson fingers that you see in multiple sclerosis, but they're not. Okay, this is a totally different disease, totally different pr process. So this is, uh, this is a lysosomal storage disease. Multiple scler sclerosis is an autoimmune disease, so they're completely different. Uh, but they look a lot, they, they, they just look similar. So you just remember that if you have MS symptoms in a child, it's probably metachromatic leukodystrophy. 
Next, we have Fabry disease. Now, Fabry disease stands out because Fabry disease is X-linked recessive. So this is only going to be in boys. That's why I put it in blue. Now, this also came with our mnemonic. Few are green. And so Fabry is alpha galactosidase. Okay, now this is different from galactocerebrosidase, so I don't want you to confuse those two enzymes. Alpha-galactosidase is with is for Fabry disease. Now, the mnemonic for this is just Fabry. F for febrile episodes, A for angiokeratomas, that's right here. B for burning pain and neuropathy, right here. R for renal failure. It's the only one of these lysosomal storage disorders that prominently gives you renal failure. And Y for youth death. This is a fatal disease. So what I really want you to remember is the angiokeratomas and the neuropathy. Uh, if, if you remember those, you should be good to go. And then also know that there's renal failure. So just remember this mnemonic Fabry, uh, but particularly remember these three in the middle here. All right, that's Fabry disease. Okay, and then finally, we've got Krabby and Gaucher. So for Krabby, I want you to remember this illustration of the galactic crab. See the little galaxies and planets and globes behind him? And so you can see our crab here, and the crab has got sort of these yellow-looking pincers, and that's to help you remember that, that Krabby disease causes some uh, degree of, of peripheral neuropathy. It also causes some of some similar symptoms to Tay-Sachs in that you can get sort of deterioration, spasticity. But uh, one of the things that's really going to help this one stand out is the optic atrophy. So they will get blindness. So uh, this is how you should remember crabby disease, your galactic crab. Now notice what's around the crab's head is this globe looking thing. Well, naturally you're out in outer space, you gotta wear a space helmet, right? So this globe looking thing is to help you remember globoid cells. So this one, you can actually take a biopsy of, of brain tissue uh, and you can look under a microscope and you see these globoid cells. And all they are is multinucleated cells inside CNS tissue. So globoid cells is pathognomonic for crabby disease. So crabby disease, galactocerebrosidase, optic atrophy, and globoid cells. Remember that and you should be good to go. Again, like I said, they're not going to give you really complicated questions. They're going to they're going to want you to know the the product that builds up, the enzyme that's defective, and then some of the uh, some of the buzzwords. So, crabby disease, you really got to remember the optic atrophy uh, with this. Okay, now finally, Gaucher disease. Gaucher disease is the most common. And what you need to remember with Gaucher disease is bone, 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 bone. So Gaucher disease is going to give you osteoporosis, bone. It's going to give you avascular necrosis of the femoral head, bone. And it's going to give you pancytopenia, bone marrow. All right? So Gaucher disease, bone. It can also give you hepatosplenomegaly. Now, Gaucher disease is a little bit different from the other ones in that you don't really get so much uh, neuro symptoms as you do with the others. So, Gaucher's disease, think bone and hepatosplenomegaly. Now, Gaucher disease it has these characteristic cells that come out of the bone marrow, and they are... Uh, they have the appearance of crumpled tissue paper. So that's something you're going to have to remember. Uh, so that's Gaucher disease. Now, there's some uh, people who believe that Gaucher disease uh, has some association with Parkinson's, particularly in family members who carry, uh, who are heterozygous for Gaucher disease. Uh, but we don't really know yet. Okay, so we've gone through all six of these. I know it sucks. Uh, this is, a lot of this stuff you're just going to have to remember, but you know we kind of went through this pretty quickly. You may want to watch the video again. Just put it in your Anki deck, and you know as long as you go over this over the course of you know a week, you should be able to memorize this stuff pretty quickly. So 
Good luck. This is like one of the worst parts of biochemistry and pathology, in my opinion.